here's how you might be unknowingly destroying the future of your app. Now look, you've heard this a million times at this point, launch a minimum viable product, a slimmed down version of your app. But of course that means that the product you launch is not going to be perfect. It's not gonna be polished or pretty. And so what I see a lot of founders doing in order to kind of mentally be okay with launching an imperfect, unpolished product is they unintentionally start to kind of trash talk their apps, even if subtly. They'll say things like, hey, heads up, this is an MVP, so you've been warned. Or please excuse the mess or this is kind of a janky version right now, so just go in knowing that. But at the same time, these founders are saying these things, trying to get their first beta users on board. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about how you could unintentionally be damaging the future of your app and business as a whole, just by how you talk about it in these early stages, plus what you should do instead to attract prospective users and not make them question why they would ever want to use your app. Now, before we dive in, if this type of content is relevant to you, it probably means you are a first time app entrepreneur. And so if you wanna make sure you're taking all the right steps toward launching your app and growing your business, we have a free deep dive workshop called the Scalable App Workshop. It's over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. Head there next to make sure you're taking all the right steps to becoming a successful app entrepreneur. So there are four specific rules you need to be following to set the right expectations with the first users of your MVP app, but without causing them to question why in the heck they would ever want to use it. All right, rule number one, no trash talking your MVP app's appearance. For example, I've seen founders saying things like, hey, the design is a little bit janky at the moment, but we're planning to hire designers to improve that. Saying something like this puts your prospective users directly into a negative state of mind. They're expecting ugly, so they're going to think ugly when they come onto your app. So what should you say instead? The app is in its first version right now and is going to go through interface improvements over the coming weeks as we get feedback on how to make it as streamlined and valuable as possible for you. Now, by saying something like this, you're still setting the right expectations with your first users which is really important, but you're not doing so in a way that puts them into a negative state of mind right off the bat. Instead, you're focusing on the value that is to come from the feedback they're going to give. So as a recap, no trash talking your app's appearance and no putting your prospective users into a negative state of mind. Instead, focus on the value that is to come. All right, rule number two is no trash talking the MVP app's feature set or lack thereof. For example, I've seen founders say something like, hey, forewarning, there's a lot missing in the app right now, but that's because it's the initial version. Now, when you say something like this, you are immediately putting your prospective users into a lacking mindset. You are telling them that there is a feature set that's probably gonna be less than helpful for them. So when they come on board, that's what they're gonna expect and that's what they're going to feel. So what should you say instead? This is a first version app meant to solve X core problem. Once we make sure we're solving that correctly, we'll also stream things like X, Y, and Z for you too. But we'll use your feedback to make sure we get the most vital part right first and then make it even more useful for you from there. Now, your MVP app should solve one core problem with all the other things to come later on. Now, when you say something like this, you are highlighting the fact that you are solving the most major core problem first, which is what matters because nothing else can really happen without that being solved first. 
So by saying this, you are, yes, setting expectations that the feature set is limited right now, but you're not talking about it in a negative way or in a lacking way. You are talking about it really in a valuable way. The feature set is limited because we want to get this first most important core problem solved right off the bat in the best ways possible and then focus on the, the rest to come. So as a recap, no trash talking your MVP apps feature set or lack thereof, and no putting prospective users into a lacking mindset right off the bat. Instead, focus on why the feature set is slimmed down right now and the impact that will have on your users. All right, rule number three, no trash talking your MVP apps user experience. For example, I've seen founders say things like, the app is a little bit confusing to navigate right now because we're just now launching it. Now saying something like this is essentially prompting your users to look for inconsistencies and points of confusion. You're essentially shining a spotlight on all of those things right off the bat. So here's what you could say instead. We're gonna be giving you a personal onboarding as an early test user so we can get feedback as we go on how to evolve the interface to cut out as much time from your processes as humanly possible. Or you could say something like, we've kept the interface as simple as possible so we can use your feedback to evolve it over the coming weeks. Now, saying something like this, again, sets the right expectations that the navigation, for example, is gonna be really simple at this stage or even guided, maybe, but it puts an emphasis on using the beta test users feedback to evolve that navigation, that user experience in a way that makes it perfect for them. Rule number four, never make it seem like being a beta test user is an inconvenience. For example, I sometimes see founders say things like, beta users are going to go through a testing and feedback period and because they've taken the time to go through that, they will receive a grandfathered monthly discount moving forward forever. Now doing something like this makes it seem like beta users should be rewarded for the chore that they've taken on or that they should be incentivized because of the inconvenience they've gone through with testing. And you never wanna do that because Number one, it invites the wrong type of feedback. You're going to be getting critique from people who are just there to share opinions versus actionable feedback on people who are looking at how the app can truly solve their problem in the best ways possible. So in, instead of looking at where the value is lacking, look at how the value can evolve. It also often attracts the wrong type of user, people who are just looking for a discount for doing a thing versus people who are truly looking for value from the app because it solves their problem. So what should you say instead? As an early access user, you'll be invited into a private testing and feedback phase where you'll have a direct line of communication to us so you can share exactly what evolutions would cause you to never look for another X app again. Now, doing this sets expectations that it is an early stage app and it is going to be a testing and feedback process, but it actually adds excitement to the process, which is what you should do versus looking at it as an inconvenience or a chore that a user has to go through. So as a quick recap, never act like the beta testing process is an inconvenience and never apologize for the state of your app. Instead, build excitement about this process. By following these rules, you're going to attract the right type of beta testers toward you so you can get the most actionable feedback possible and grow your app and business as a whole from there. All right, I hope this was helpful. We'll see you in the next one.